China will ban all karaoke songs deemed to be a security risk. A uh, robber's handwriting was so terrible that the bank staff didn't even know he was trying to rob their bank. And a man is accused of tattooing a child inside a fast food restaurant. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian and recorded inside a closet. We're back in the closet, baby. Let's do it. China is banning karaoke songs that they deemed to be a security risk. China will ban karaoke songs perceived to endanger national security as state controls attempt to muzzle the microphones of a karaoke-obsessed nation. Good luck with that, China. And by the way, which songs are security threats? Let me guess. Ever since I can remember, I've been popping my color, popping, popping my color. Something like that would be a security risk. What about something as simple as Jump Around by House of Pain? Oh, no. Jump Around. I'll serve your ass like John McEnroe. If your girl steps up, I can't say it on this podcast. You know what I'm talking about, guys. I'm talking about some good old school hip hop songs, which I'm sure are the first on the list of banned songs in China because they're not nice. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism said it will establish a blacklist of banned songs with illegal content within the songs. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. That's... Uh, with such lyrics as back that ass up. Uh, <laughs> what about I touch myself? What about that one? Is that one considered illegal content? It's a classic 80s tune. Uh, they're saying these banned songs endanger national security. They incite ethnic hatred or even promote cults, gambling, and crime. Well, yeah, unfortunately, nearly every hardcore rap song will uh, promote crime of some sort. <laughs> China regularly removes songs determined to be politically incorrect from domestic music streaming services. Well, yeah, you're probably removing a lot of songs if you deem them to be politically incorrect. Like almost all of hip hop music, we're not, no one's talking about this really because we're too busy canceling actors and comedians, but like all of hip hop music is just the maltreatment of ladies, committing crimes, doing drugs, flaunting your money in ways that are unacceptable. This sort of activity. <laughs> How many guns have you seen in a hip-hop video? So many. So many, bro. So many guns. <laughs> but yet, no one's, no one's doing anything about that. No, they're canceling comedians like me. You made fun of a gender you're not. <laughs> Off the airwaves with you. Uh, just making a point here, guys. Personally, I like hip-hop music. And I don't want that to be canceled. I don't want comedy to be canceled. I think art should be left the hell alone, as I've said many times on this podcast. All right, let's get back to the article about China being stupid. Um, so they published this just yesterday, the ministry. They did not elaborate on how a song could endanger national security or reveal the contents of what's on the blacklist. I guess you're going to have to guess when you go sing. <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot lie. Woo, woo. Next thing you know, you're in a cell. I had no idea. I had no idea. I was just trying to promote big butts in the world, all right? We don't have a lot of big butts in China. I'm just trying to, <laughs> just trying to promote it. <laughs> uh, a national security law imposed by Beijing on Hong Kong last year effectively criminalized the public performance of songs sung during anti-government protests that rocked the semi-autonomous city in 2019. In 2019, Chinese music streaming sites took down unofficial protest anthems, including the Les Mis song, Do You Hear the People Sing, as well as some songs by the Chinese rock musician Li Ji that referred to the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. Also, uh, maybe they're just really trying to target songs that promote protests, anti-government rally types of songs, and, and not so much Sir Mix-a-Lot as I originally thought. <laughs> We have a quote here from the, someone who works for the ministry. Uh, Since there are almost 50,000 karaoke and entertainment venues nationwide, law enforcement and supervision is going to be particularly difficult in this one. <laughs> okay. You're right. Uh, is there really 50,000 karaoke bars in China? That's fascinating to me. Uh, here's a quote from the minister 
Continuing, the basic song library of karaoke venues systems can have over 100,000 songs. It can be difficult for venue operators to identify what tracks are illegal as well. Yeah, this is an uphill battle for you guys in China. Just really silly. Uh, here's a quote from one user who uh, says, Our culture has gone 15 years backwards. What the hell? How many people are still going to karaoke now and it still needs to be... Positive? Why don't they just sing the national anthem every day? I mean, what else is left? Should I sing a positive song ten times over to brainwash myself into becoming positive? Said another person. Yeah, I agree with these quotes. See, rather silly. And impossible to enforce, being that there are so many songs and so many karaoke bars. I mean, we're just going to have a police officer just chilling in karaoke bars. That would be a good gig, though, if you're a police officer and you were paid to just sit in a karaoke bar. Probably not supposed to sing, but like every once in a while, you're going to have to get up. I fought the law and the, the law won. Never mind. I am the law. A man's handwriting was so terrible, a bank staff had no idea he was actually trying to rob them. This story is out of the UK. The police say a dude named Ian Slattery, age 67, retired, has been given an extended sentence for entering three banks in Eastbourne and Hastings in the space of two weeks and using written notes to ask the cashiers to hand over some money. His first attempt was at the Nationwide Building Society in Eastbourne in the morning. Due to poor handwriting, the employee was actually unable to read the note and Slattery left the bank (laughs) empty-handed. I like that. Poor handwriting. Yes, uh, please read the note and uh, do as it says. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I can't read the note. But you know, you read the note and do as it says. But now it doesn't say anything that I can. I just it's illegible. It says, "Give me all your." I can't read that last one. Give me all your um, mayonnaise. Does it say? Give me all your. We don't have. This isn't a sandwich shop, young man. <laughs> old, old retired man. No, no, no. If you could just read the note again, it's you'll. I'm sure you can piece it together. This. Contextual clues. I'm in a banking establishment. I'm saying, give, just read it. Give me all your, mm, uh, give me all your m- maps. We don't carry maps. This is a bank, sir. <laughs> I wish I was there. I wish I was given the note, and I would have seen the look on his face when they handed it back. Nope. <laughs> I guess he didn't have a a gun of any sort that he could just whip out and blast into the ceiling and make an announcement. This is a robbery. Any of you, one of you, bricks moving on. You know the line. Execute every last MF. Uh, the Sussex police spokesperson said that the staff at the bank later, later on managed to read the note, which said, your screen won't stop what I've got. Just hand over the 10s and the 20s. Think about the other customers. That's what the note said. Well, here's your problem, buddy. You wrote way too much on there. For someone with terrible handwriting, you just need to write just one sentence. You got, you got like a run-on sentence here, but there's two sentences. And I don't even understand what it merely means. Your screen won't stop what I've got. Your screen, oh, your screen that you're sitting behind. Oh, in other words, you have a weapon that can penetrate the screen. See, again, this is very, uh, you know, it's, it could be translated in, in many different ways here. You got to be very direct. I have gun. Give me money. End of story. Fill bag. And then you show your gun. You don't even have to write you have a gun. You just fill bag. You open up your little coat. You show that you have a weapon. That You you show them that you're strapped, as the kids say. And then they put it in there. You don't write all this stuff. Yes, good afternoon. Imagine, the, like, the note says, oh, good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to be in your establishment today. Unfortunately for you, though, this is a robbery. If you could please fill the satchel with all of the 10s and the 20s. I have a very sophisticated weapon that's able to penetrate any glass screen, even bulletproof glass. Uh, And, of course, you should think of the customers' lives that are in your establishment at the moment and just cooperate with this robbery. I don't want to harm anybody. That's not my intention. I would just like to get on my way with all your 10s and 20s. If you could just fill the bag to where it says fill here, that would be extremely helpful. And I can get out of here and we can go about our day. You won't be harmed. No one in the building will be harmed. And I can use my money to travel to Fiji. (laughs) Way too much information. So he left, I guess he left the bank. They rang the police who uh, seized the note and the CCTV footage from inside the bank. 
Now, then, it looks like they didn't catch him. A couple of weeks later, he walked into a, another National Building Society. This one. As inquiries were ongoing to trace Slattery, police received a call from the NatWest Bank in Havelock Road, Hastings, around one in the afternoon. Uh, staff at the bank reported a man entering the branch, handing over a threatening note demanding money. The, the cashier challenged the man, who then left empty-handed. Upon receiving this report, officers say they attended the last known address for Slattery, identified him walking around in the vicinity. He was arrested on the suspicion of robbery, two counts of attempted robbery. But he, he actually got away with one of them, it looks like. A search of his address found some sticky labels identical to the label that had been handed to a staff at the NatWest Bank. And a jacket that matched the man. This guy really didn't think ahead. Uh, now there's, a, there's a copy of the note here I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, it's the one that says, your screen won't stop what, what I've got. Just hand over. Wow, this is terrible. Looks like it was written by a child. Tens and twenties actually looks like 10 degrees and 20 degrees. Think about the cost. Yeah, you can kind of read this, but really sloppy. And when you're robbing a bank, you want to be very clear with your note. I would recommend have someone with better handwriting than yourself. You know, don't give it to a doctor to scribble your note on. You know, go, hey, doc, you want to scribble my robbery note here? Make it legible. No, you want to have someone that you know with very good handwriting. Maybe someone who's familiar with calligraphy. Maybe <laughs> handing a calligraphy. A <laughs> robbery note would be hilarious. I, I would imagine you could just type it out on your phone and show them your phone. What about that? Or just lean in and quietly say, Psst, hey, why don't you uh, cooperate with me? You know what I mean. Hand over all your 10s and 20s. Just put it right down my, my pants. Fill up this fanny pack, if you could, with all the 10s and 20s that you have. It's, uh, I'm curious why he only wanted 10s and 20s. I guess because it's easier to pass them off. You stop passing off $1,000 bills, man. People get suspicious. Uh, so in that way, he was smart. But in all the other ways, it's terrible. Just a terrible attempt here. He's getting a six-year extended sentence. Oh, boy. Investigating officer Detective Constable Jay Fair was quoted as saying, Well, these incidents caused fear and distress to both the employees working in the banks and to the wider public in general. I'd like to thank all the victims and witnesses who supported the investigation. I'm pleased to see the severity of the offenses reflected in the sentence handed out by the court as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, we will make sure that his handwriting remains terrible. We won't allow him to be writing in prison so he can't practice these things. In case he does this again, we want to know. Ooh, it's the terrible handwriting bandit. Back at it again. Yes, we're doing the best we can. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. <laughs> A man is accused of tattooing a child inside a fast food restaurant, and I can't believe it's not Florida. Nope, but close, though. It's Georgia, oh, Georgia, giving kids tattoos in a Burger King. <laughs> I want to know what fast food joint this was. A man is facing charges after the police say he tattooed a kid inside a fast food restaurant. <laughs> Lauren's police chief, Chrissy, told the media that her, her department launched an investigation after detectives were tagged in social media posts that showed a video of a child being tattooed the day before. Wait a minute. You didn't call the police the day of? The, the employees of the, <laughs> of the fast food joint weren't like, hey, he's tattooing a child in that booth. Maybe we ought to call the police now. Nah, bro, let's take a video of it and then tag, him, tag the police in it tomorrow. <laughs> Way to help out fast food employees. Although, admittedly, are they really paid enough to stop crime in the place? They're really not. You're working at a fast food joint in Florida or Georgia or Tennessee. You just want to live through your shift, really. That's what you're trying. That's where you're setting the bar at. Let me just live through my shift. 
I'm not going to exactly get involved with a crazy person tattooing a kid. Who's this guy? Brandon Presha, age 28, was identified as the unlicensed tattoo artist. <laughs> unlicensed. Oh, he didn't have a license? Wow, what a surprise. He's tattooing a kid in whatever fast food place this is. They still don't say. Oh, oh, it's it's at McDonald's. <laughs> okay. Hey, look at man. It's hard. It's hard to get work as a tattoo artist. All right, people are scared. They don't want to be touched by others during COVID. All right, <laughs> so you got to go out. You got to go find your customers these days. They're not coming to you. What better place than the playground at a McDonald's? <laughs> Brandon, age twenty eight, was identified as the as I said, unlicensed tattoo artist recorded tattooing a juvenile in what appeared to be the front dining area of a McDonald's. I assume it's indoors. <laughs> you think that you're going to get away with this in a McDonald's? No one's going to hear that in the corner. No one's going to hear that. <sighs> and how about, how about the kid getting a tattoo? Nice to know you're in a sanitary environment, a Georgia McDonald's. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What infections do we even need to concern ourselves with? It's a McDonald's in Georgia. Nothing to see here. Brandon is facing charges of illegal tattooing and, and tattooing a person under 18 years of age. These are the crimes. What about, uh, I don't know, I guess illegal tattooing covers the McDonald's tattooing situation. I mean, you can't even write laws because no one would have even thought to prepare for something like this ever. Who would ever think that someone would tattoo someone in a McDonald's? <laughs> you just can't even, you know, so they just got to label it illegal tattooing, which could cover all sorts of places where you're not supposed to tattoo your front porch, you know, the bus, <laughs> you know, Chick-fil-A. It's just like <laughs> tattoos are only, you can only tattoo people in two places, a tattoo parlor and a prison. Everybody knows that. Yeah. I have to confess, I, I got two tattoos in a kitchen once. Yeah, It was in the same night. I was tattooed in a kitchen. That's right. And during one of those tattoos, I was I was holding the tattoo artist's baby. That's pretty exciting. Here, hold my baby while I tattoo your arm. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm good with babies unless they're crying. <laughs> I got to say, though, it was uh, holding a baby while you're getting tattooed is a nice distraction from you know some of the pain because it can be painful. You can imagine the environment I was in, though. I was in a kitchen, so I was I was pretty liquored up, not going to lie. I was probably too liquored to be even holding a baby or getting a tattoo at the time. Uh, maybe I shouldn't share so much on here. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to be arrested eventually because of this podcast. Yay, what's up? This is your trusty, dependable host, Jonesy. And I want to thank everybody who's hung in till the end. Uh, I'm going to publish some phone calls after this, so stick around for a little bit longer if you'd like to hear some hilarious phone calls. You can call the show yourself if you feel up to it. 646-450-2012. Got some nice emails for some peop- from some people, like Monique from Florida. Yeah, Monique from Miami. She says uh, she tells all her friends about my show and Florida Fridays, so big shout-out to Monique for doing that. I appreciate it when you tell your friends about about the show. I really like that a lot. Uh, we got a shout out to Pam who sent me an article. Thanks so much, Pam. What else? We got a uh, Michael sent me an email, wrote Jonesy. I love your show. I listen to it every night before bed. Recently you asked if anyone else was having audio trouble with their Google home systems. I use a Google, Google home mini and my audio levels just fine. Uh, he says, I have no solution to any of the other problems. These people are having as mine is fine. Michael. Uh, very helpful. Yeah, Michael's referring to the, uh, the the question I put out to people the other day that if you were listening on one of your Google devices, were you having trouble? Because some people were. Uh, for those of you who are having trouble, just email me and I will cut and paste you some instructions because one of my trusty, reliable listeners, Michael, gave me some great advice on how to fix issues with Google Mini because I don't have one myself. I had to ask the experts, which is, uh, you know, not me. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'll uh, just email me, funnyjones at gmail.com. I'll send you some instructions, and hopefully we can work it out. Uh, Shout-out to Wendy, also, who sent me an article. Uh, Shout-out to Grace, Grace Tauber. She wrote me, uh, hey, Jonesy, just finished listening to Wacky-Ass Florida Fridays. Everything sounds fine from my Google Home. Thanks, Grace. Lovely to hear from you. Uh, We got a nice email from Kirk. Kirk said uh, he listens 
with the home, the home mini. He's got two, the home and the home mini. Wow. So this always, always sounds clean, Jonesy. Great volume. Of course, my favorite part of my evening Google routine. You're the best, Jonesy. No, you're the best, Kirk. Let's be real here. Uh, so, yeah. Also, shout out to Natalie. Natalie Haynes from Nolans. She's, uh, she's like, you ought to come to NOLA, Jonesy, and do a show. I would love to. I would love to go to NOLA. Uh, I would love to go do shows in your area. I mean, we can make that happen, I think. Uh, so reach out to me if you'd like me to perform. Um, if enough people in a certain area reach out to me, I will go to that area. Uh, and I will uh, I'll set up a show. And uh, I mean, I'm not looking to make a crap load of money doing this, but if, you know, if we can cover Jonesy's expenses, that'd be pretty be pretty chill to just go to a new place, do some jokes. I'll record an episode in your kitchen. and uh, But you got to feed me and give me booze and maybe let me crash on your couch. Is everybody cool with this? <laughs> so I don't know. Reach out. Reach out. Funnyjones at gmail.com or I'm on Instagram at funnyjones as well. Just hit me up, say what's up. Or you can call me as well. You got the number. I love you all very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Jonesy. It's Samantha Fowler calling from Pennsylvania. I'm just calling to let you know I have a Google Home device and I can hear you perfectly coming through great. So I have a Google Home device and it is working perfect. All right. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Bye. Hi. And that dress, the wedding dress story um, made me laugh. Because you're totally right, I would have a hard time holding on to all of the sentimental things you're supposed to hold on to. The cake, the dress, the rings, the flower, the whatever. I don't know. I'm good with a photo album and the partner that I have. But anyways, um, yeah, recently a piece of cake from a wedding just sold for a couple million dollars. Princess Diana's cake to um, wedding to... uh, Prince Charles or whatever. Anyways, you remember. So that was really funny to be holding on to that for a piece of cake for so long and find out it's worth millions. Anyways, Florida man, you crack me up. I have ADD too. Um, <laughs> you guys have a great day. Keep doing what you do, Jonesy. Good luck with your life, man.